Hi friends, I'm going to talk on a very important topic today, pupil. You will come across patients with abnormal pupil, whether you're working in ophthalmology or not, and abnormal pupil is always an alarming sign. So I'm going to talk on what a normal pupil is, and uh, how to differentiate whether a dilated pupil is normal or a small pupil is normal when only one pupil is abnormal. And let us also try to look for some important causes for a small pupil and dilated pupil and we'll try to briefly touch upon how to check the pupil. This shows a very basic uh, relevant anatomy of pupil in relation to assessment of pupil uh, this is the iris plane that is the iris tissue and the central uh, circular aperture in the iris is called as pupil just around the border of the pupil we have a circular muscle which is called as a sphincter pupillae and that is supplied by the parasympathetic nervous system uh, stimulation of this is responsible for uh, constriction of pupil. In the peripheral part, we have got the dilator pupillae muscle which are radially arranged and when they contract, they pull the pupil away from the pupillary margin causing dilatation of the pupil and they are under the parasympathetic, uh, sorry, the sympathetic nervous system. So, pupil is a central aperture in the iris which measures about uh, 3 to 4 millimeters in size in normal individuals. Uh, there are a lot of physiological variations in pupil size. Uh, for example, the pupil is very small at birth and in old age. The pupil is uh, small when the patient is sleeping and the pupil dilates whenever there is increased uh, sympathetic activity uh, as uh, during stress. The Circular muscles that the sphincter pupillae, when they contract, they cause constriction of the pupil and they are under parasympathetic supply. Uh, whereas the radial muscles, the dilator pupillae, are under a sympathetic nervous system which are responsible for uh, dilating the pupil. The very basic pupil assessment uh, involves checking for the direct light reflex. Uh, the afferent for this is the optic nerve. The impulses uh, uh, go from the optic nerve to Edinger Westphal nucleus, and from there they come back via the third cranial nerve, that is oculomotor nerve. The parasympath parasympathetic nervous system mm, uh, for the pupil is from Edinger Westphal nucleus uh, coming through the oculomotor nerve to ciliary ganglion and from there it comes to sphincter pupillae via short ciliary nerves. Uh, sympathetic nervous supply starting from uh, hypothalamus comes to the superior cervical ganglion and from there it uh, comes to dilator pupillae via the ciliary body. So if the difference in pupil size is more than two millimeters that constitutes an isochoria. A pupil smaller than 2 millimeters is uh, called as a meiotic pupil or meiosis and more than 4 millimeters constitutes midriasis. So when you check for the pupil, the most important thing you look for is the direct light reflex. So when you put the torch on one pupil, if it constricts briskly and it shows a sustained contraction, that means that irrespective of the size of the pupil that pupil is normal the other thing is the consensual light reflex where when you put the light on one pupil the other pupil constricts the second important test that you need to do in assessing the pupil is to check for the pupil size in uh, dim light and bright light conditions if the anisochoria that is the s difference in size of the pupil between two eyes increases in bright light it means that there is a parasympathetic palsy uh, and we need to look for the reasons for parasympathetic palsy whereas if the anisochoria increases in dim light 
then uh, the probable pathology lies in the sympathetic nerve system. So the very important causes for a dilated pupil or a midriatic pupil is uh, first is the oculomotor nerve palsy that is third nerve palsy which can be associated with the restriction of the ocular muscles like superior rectus, inferior rectus, medial rectus, inferior oblique etc. Apart from that injury can cause the pupil to become dilated. Optic atrophy due to any cause like glaucoma or severe retinal disease can as well cause the pupil to become dilated. The very important cause for a dilated pupil is uh, the installation of the drops or sun systemic drugs that cause the pupil to dilate like parasympatholytics like atropine, tropicamide, cyclopentolate, sympathomimetics like phenylephrine, cocaine, hydroxamphetamine are important causes for a dilated pupil. You should always look for the history of intake of any particular drops or drugs in a patient with the dilated pupil whether it is unilateral or bilateral. Again a very important thing that you need to keep in mind is uh, to look for oculomotor nerve palsy as a reason for dilated pupil because that is something which is life threatening. On the other side a small pupil or meiotic pupil has got few important causes like Horner syndrome which is basically oculosympathetic paresis where the lesion is uh, in the sympathetic nervous system uh, anywhere from hypothalamus to the CA to T2 in the spinal cord. It is characterized by ptosis that is the drooping of the upper lid, meiosis that is the constricted pupil, and ophthalmos means uh, the inner recession of the eyeball where the eyeball goes in it is just opposite to proptosis where there is a protrusion of the eyeball. Facial anhydrosis that is absence of sweating on that side of the face again it is related to the sympathetic palsy. A difference in color of the two iris of the two eyes uh, that is iris heterochromia is a sign of congenital or uh, the, the congenital Horner's. A presence of Horner syndrome is again something which needs to be taken very seriously because uh, sometimes that can be a sign of uh, a tumor in the apex of the lungs. The other important causes for a meiotic pupil, iridocyclitis can cause a constricted pupil. Drug induced small pupil like pilocarpine, morphine, opium and organophosphorus compounds. Especially if any patient comes with a history of poisoning and you see that the pupil is very small, then think of uh, opium or morphine poisoning or organophosphorus compound poisoning. Pontine hemorrhages as well can lead to your pupil to be very very small. Some of the tests that you can do to see whether the abnormal pupil is Horner's or not. Uh, you can do dilate it with the uh, 1% topical phenylephrine which uh, dilates in case of postganglionic Horner syndrome now uh, whereas the normal pupil or a pupil where the pathology is in the central or preganglionic fibers in case of Horner's will not dilate with 1% topical phenylephrine. Other drops that 
can be used but are not very commonly used are uh, cocaine and uh, hydroxyamphetamine for uh, uh, differentiating between uh, uh, post ganglionic and uh, pre and central ganglionic uh, mm, Horner syndrome. RAPD that is Marcus gun pupil which is uh, assessed by doing a swinging flashlight test is a very important test because sometimes RAPD can only be a sign of vision or life threatening condition. You check for an RAPD by flashing the light on one pupil and then swinging it between the two pupils frequently between the two eyes and you see that the moment you take the light from one pupil and put it on the other the pupil on that side dilates instead of constricting uh, that is uh, RAPD and it always indicates incomplete optic nerve lesion on one side or a severe retinal disease leukocoria leuco as you all know is white and the white pupil that is you get white pupillary reflex uh, you do come across this in children and when you see a white reflex that is again a very emergency in pediatric patients uh, because that can be a sign of malignancy that is a uh, retinoblastoma uh, there are quite a lot of reasons as well for white pupil but uh, it's very important to rule out retinoblastoma which is uh, life as well as vision threatening so i'd say pupil abnormality can be the only sign of uh, life threatening or a vision threatening condition so if you notice that the pupil is abnormal don't take it lightly uh, get it assessed by an expert uh, to make sure that it is not something which uh, is very concerning uh, we will continue with our discussion on pupil in our uh, subsequent presentations hope you enjoyed uh, this talk uh, please do give your feedbacks on this presentation and uh, keep watching our videos. Thanks. Bye.